what's up guys, Alex here, thank you for checking this video and welcome to another tutorial about Affinity Designer. In this lesson we're gonna take a look at a bunch of tools in the left main toolbar. So if you remember in the previous lesson I showed you that Affinity works with personas and every persona has different tools. So if you're working on a pixel persona or the export persona you're gonna have different tools on your left sidebar. For now we're gonna take care, we're gonna take a look only at the draw persona, at the main tools on the sidebar to actually create vector elements. The first tool is the selection tool that by default when you open a new document is selected by default. The selection tool comes with a sub tool that is the artboard tool that we saw in the previous lesson on how to create an artboard or how to convert a pre-existing document, a pre open document into an artboard. Before starting digging into all the tools here I want to show you just one single quick tip that is the actual uh, an actual guide, an actual tips and help that it's constantly happening inside Affinity Designer. Every time you have a tool selected at the bottom left of your software you're gonna have a description of all the shortcut that you can use with that specific tool. So right now I have the selection tool activated. So if I drag I can create a marquee selection, if I click I can select an element. If I change tool you will notice that description here changes with the tool that I select and here they get listed all the different shortcuts and key combination and key shortcode that you can use with that specific tool. So let's create an element first of all, let's create a couple of rectangles and let me change the color so you can see it. So let's create this one, two and three. Now we select the selection tool. The selection tool works pretty much like every other selection tool in every other software ever. If you click on an element, that element is selected. If you click and drag that element, you can move it. The thing that is slightly different about the selection tool in Affinity Designer is the way that it interacts with all the elements when you drag and drop to do uh, uh, full selection. So if we drag, if we click and drag, we create the marquee selection. If we include the entire element, you will notice that um, border, a blue border gets created at, around this element. So let me hide, let me change a little bit the color so you can see it more. If I drag and drop, if I'm halfway through, nothing happens. But if I include the entire element inside the selection, a blue border appears to indicate that I actually selected that specific object. This is really handy because if we have multiple objects, one on top of the other, and I want to select just one object, I can do that without affecting the other. If I don't include other objects inside the selection, the system won't select those objects. This is really helpful. So if I want to select these two cubes and leave out the last cube on the right, I can just select with the marquee these two cube and not include this one even if I go on top. The second tool is the node tool. If we select the node tool and we click on an object that is just a rectangle, the thing that we created, here the options as you notice are identical to the selection tool. So if I change the tool from the selection to the node, nothing changes here. I have the control to manipulate the borders, I have the control to realign, to uh, change the stroke or change the fill. We're gonna see all these options in the future, not right now. But the fact that these tool are pretty much identical but they're actually not because this tool is just to select the node tool is to control nodes but this rectangle is a shape is not a curve and the node tools can control curves so let's convert one of these rectangles into curve and I'm gonna convert like let's remove one extra rectangle let's turn these into another color and let's convert this rectangle by selecting it and clicking on convert to curves. Now this rectangle gets recognized, nothing happens here when you select it with the selection tool. It's exactly the same, you have all the control that you want, you can change the stroke, you can change the feel, but 
first in the layer panel is recognized as a curve. And if we select the node tool, you can see here we don't have anymore the standard transform tool that you have around an object, but you can select every single node, each node at the corner. And all these nodes are independent between each other, you can control them and you can edit it. So if I click here and I drag, I can drag just a corner and this is different from editing one of these with the selection tool. So the selection tool maintains the actual boundaries of the object. The node tool, you have full control on the node and all the curves. With the selection tool, if you have an object selected, you can of course change the ratio. If you hold shift, it's gonna maintain the proportion. So if you can see here, I'm holding shift. If I remove the shift, I can change the proportion and the ratio how I want. I hold shift again, it maintains the original ratio. If I hold the command, it's gonna scale from the center. So if I remove command, it's gonna scale from the opposite. Uh, corner. So if I select the bottom right corner, it's going to scale from the top left corner. If I hold command, it's going to scale from the center of the object. And if I hold both command and shift together, it's going to maintain the ratio and scale from the center. Also here, the selection tool has a quick tool to rotate. You can access these options also from the corners. If you um, if you feel comfortable with accessing the corner, you can rotate and you're gonna have a hint of the angle of your rotation. But if you don't wanna go for a selection of the corner and risk to grab it and actually resize it instead of grabbing the activity in the rotation option, you can just click here directly, go directly on the stop handle and activate the rotation as well. And also the rotation has an shortcut to activate a snap of 15 angle of 15 degrees of angle. So if I'm rotating here, I have full control on the rotation. If I hold shift, you're going to notice that the cube now is rotating and is snapping every 15 degrees. This gives us the ability to be more accurate, respect the grid and control the rotation, not be completely random if we're not uh, using the shift key. You have of course the same control and the same options with a curve if you have the selection tool, but if you have the node tool, you don't have this control. You can of course select everything with a marquee and move everything around, but the power of the node tool gives us the ability to control corner by corner, vector by vector of a shape. So let's convert these uh, corners into something more interesting. By default, a corner, if you create a shape that is from a geometry, so a square or a rectangle, it's going to be a sharp edge. We can change it and we can update it to convert it into a smooth edge. If we convert it to a smooth edge, let me zoom it a little bit to see more, the system will create this curve that we can control with this two handle. These two handles are by default connected with each other. So if I edit one, the other is going to move. Of course, also here you can detach this option with a bunch of shortcuts. So if we hold shift, this handle is going to be independent, but it's going to maintain, it's going to be snapped to the actual axis. So I cannot go up and down. I can just follow the axis, but it's independent. So I can grow it a little bit more. And then if I remove the pressure and shift, these two handles are again together. If I hold option, I completely detach the handle. So these now it's independent. This turns into a Bezier curve where this movement doesn't affect the other curve. And I can create the shape that I want. If I remove, the option, of course, these two handle snaps together again. So let's create a random shape, like for example, like that. If we decided that we don't like this shape, we want to revert back to a sharp shape, you can do that by clicking on the sharp conversion button on top here to revert the status of your corner of your vertex into a sharp. 
Another way to edit this sharp uh, corner and create a curve here without converting the corner into a bezier is grabbing directly the edge of your geometry. So if I change a little bit the color so you can see it more, if I go on rollover on the edge, you will notice that a small curve icon appears on the node tool. And if I grab the corner and if I pull it, automatically this section and these two vertex will be converted into a Bezier curve that it's independent from the another. So this vertex is sharp to the right, but is a curve to the left or going down. So this is an independent a corner that has two different handles. One is completely flat and is completely detached and the other one we can control it with a curve. And of course you can apply this method to every edge that you want and create all the shape that you want. If you select one, of course to activate a handle you have to select the specific corner and if we edit everything we're gonna have every corner with a specific handle. Another thing that you can do is click directly. Of course, if we um, drag and drop, this thing is just, the, the edge is just going to follow and it's going to curve with us. But if we click on the edge without dragging it and just one single click, automatically the system will create another vertex that is completely independent from the two vertex and by default is a smooth curve that we can convert also in this way with a sharp curve. So this can be a really interesting thing to use. Remember, you don't have to select an edge. If you want to edit an edge, you just click it, drag and drop it. If you want to add a vertex, you don't have to double click anything. You have to just one single click and it's going to create all the vertex. Here you have different action to create a sort of automation to whatever we were doing before. So with this first action you can break the curves. If you break the curves now these two are two different disconnected vertex and if you notice we don't have anymore the blue, let me actually go almost white, we don't have the blue border that connects. This means that these two vertex are not connected anymore and this shape it's actually open. This other tool is the closed curve. So in order to use the closed curve we have to select two different vertex. So if we select the two vertex by holding shift, if we hold shift we can select more than one. But let's deselect, let's select one, hold shift, select the second one and then close the gap. A new curve is going to be created in, in between uh, these two uh, vertex. In order to remove the vertex we can just simply press delete on, on our keyboard. So if we select a vertex, we press delete, automatically the system will remove the vertex and merge everything with one single curve. So let's do it again, select this, press delete and the vertex it's gone. If we want to do it in another way, let's select a vertex, let's detach it and now these two are detached. If we snap it one on top of the other and we select both with the marquee selection and we merge it, automatically this system will merge and it will not create a curve in between the two vertex because uh, Affinity is pretty good in snapping and dimension and proportion compared to Illustrator that sometimes even if you visually see um, vertex snapping on top of another, in reality there's like a couple of pixels of gap in between those two vertex. So even if, when you merge a curve, you're gonna have those weird situation where two vertex are so close that you have this curve in between the two vertex that it's so hard to control and all this kind of weird stuff. Another easy way to access the node tool when you have the selection tool is by double clicking. And basically double clicking on a curve will automatically switch your selection, your tool, to the node tool. Of course it's a tool. This one, this rectangle is not a curve, it's just a rectangle. So if we double click of course the system will switch to the node tool but nothing will happen here because we cannot 
control this section as a curve because it's not a curve. The good thing about not having a rectangle as a curve that you can control the shape and change dynamically the shape as many times as you want without affecting the actual original status of the shape. So let's take a look on how to dynamically update a shape. Let's delete these, let's maintain this color, but I want to create a perfect rectangle. So I'm going to drag and drop, hold the shift, and I'm going to have a perfectly square rectangle. Of course, all these options, you can control it by the transform tool here that I edited my working area to have the transform tool here. You can control the location, you can update the width and height, the rotation, and you can control the snapping of your element by clicking on one of these corners. But for now, we have this shape. Now this is a shape, is not a curve, so we can absolutely control the corners and the uh, behavior of the corners. First of all, let's change the corner from a sharp to a rounded corner. As you can see, automatically the system applies a rounded corner and this looks kind of like a perfect icon for your iPhone. But right now, because we converted the sharp edges into rounded edges, we can access the node tool to activate some subsections of this rectangle shape. So let's access the node tool. And as you can see here, we have a new control that it's only on the top left corner, it's not present on the other corners. If we click and drag and drop, we can dynamically change the ratio of the curvature of our corners. And if you notice here, you have the same control of the percentage here in the top one. So you can manually control here. You can write your settings, you can write your value, or you can manually drag and drop with the node tool. And we have the same option if we want a straight corner here, of course, this is straight and this is great because it's not actually adding any new uh, vertex here. So it's it's way easier to control, control this type of shape here instead of manually creating vertex. And if you have to change or update the size of this octagon, with vertex would be kind of a nightmare, but this one we just drag one single uh, control point or we change the percentage here of the value and everything will scale dynamically. Let's take a look at the concave option that it's pretty identical but of course the curvature is the opposite way so you can easily create a pattern with amazing shapes here and the last one is the cutout that you actually have a cross, you can generate a cross and you can control everything from 0 to 100 and this is pretty useful. Of course, if you do the mistake or you do it on purpose of converting this into a curve, you don't have any more this option and you cannot go back, you cannot revert back this into a shape. So now these vertex are completely detached and you cannot have that sweet option to control everything together. Let's revert back by common Z, let's go back here and that's perfect. Well, it's pretty much it for today's lesson. We took a look of the two main tools of Affinity Designer, the selection tool and the node tool. And we looked, we actually noticed how much different are these tools, even if they are pretty similar and they do pretty much the same thing, like selecting, dragging, moving, depending on the status of the object that you're editing, if it's a shape or it's a curve, you have a lot of different options, a lot of different automations and customization that can make your life way easier and can speed up a lot your design process. So thank you guys for checking this video, hope you enjoyed, if you did please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel and if you want you can spend a couple of minutes to check the support me page on my website to see all the different ways and methods to support me, support my channel and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again guys and I'll talk to you in the next lesson.